Oh, well, today I'm going to look at Battlestar Galactica, the board game. Back in the day, I enjoyed the 1978 version of Battlestar Galactica series. So I was skeptical of this one. Um, I thought the original one had good special effects, good acting, and a good storyline. But I just actually recently started watching this series, and I'm happy with how it's going. It's, uh, they delve more into the Cylons evolving into developing kind of organic aspects of them as well. And they, they, they do a good homage to the original as well. So I'm happy that this game, uh, so the original series was in 1978 and the, and the most recent one on the Sci-Fi Channel came out in 2004. This game came out in 2008. Game by Corey Kaniska from Fantasy Flight Games. So the overall premise of Galactica is that there were 13 human colonies or tribes and 12 were decimated by Cylons, which are you know, robotic, but they also have some organics with them. And the remnants of the 12 are some 40,000 plus humans are in a fleet, which is you know, protected by the Battlestar Galactica, and they're searching to find the 13th colony, which is Earth, and it's kind of mythical if Earth exists or not. These are some of the main players here. It's a big box, well done. It's got a lot of components it holds. Good overview and back. It's three to six players, 14 and up. Can be played in two to three hours. It's got some miniatures with it. Nice components I'll show. And so there's two teams, there's the, the humans and then there's Cylons. And there's some mystery about who, who is a human and who is a Cylon, and that's part of the intrigue of the game. The humans are trying to find the map to get to Earth, and the Cylons are trying to destroy the humans. Here's all the components contained in the box. First of all, the 32-page rulebook. Here's the game board map, and on it you have these resource styles for fuel, food, morale, and population. Character sheets for the characters, ten of them. Chief, Colonel, President, Tom Zurich, who also was Apollo in the 1970s version, the actor was. Starbuck, Apollo, Hilo, Boomer, Gaius, and the Commander. And then the matching character tokens and stands, which are nicely done. Piloting tokens for Hilo, Starbuck, Apollo, and Boomer. Current player token. New tokens, civilian ship tokens, and the face are the the resources that are lost if the uh, ship is destroyed. For instance, there base stars for the Cylons, Cylon centurion markers, damage tokens for battle star components. And for Cylon ships, the fleet marker, on the character sheets, you have the name, the character type, for instance, military leader, support, positive abilities, negative abilities, the setup location and the skill set. The plastic miniatures of the ships are nice, nicely done miniatures. There's eight Vipers, four Raptors, 16 Cylon Raiders, 
and four Cylon Heavy Raiders. And the game includes one eight-sided dice. And then I've shown here the the individual types of miniatures of the ships to give a little more detail. These are the Vipers. They're used by the humans to defend their fleet and to attack silent ships. They're either placed in the reserves, damaged Vipers, or space areas of the game board. Raptors, they're used by the humans to scout for new destinations and attempt to find resources, such as fuel and food. They're never used in combat and remain in the reserves until destroyed. The Cylon Raiders, they're used to attack the fleet. They're plentiful and often attack vipers and civilian ships, and they're kind of fairly fragile compared to the others. Cylon Heavy Raiders, used by Cylons to land boarding parties in Galactica. They never attack other ships. Their sole purpose is to reach the hangar deck and release their deadly Centurion boarding parties. Then again, these are civilian ships indicated by these markers, and it shows the resources that are lost if the ship is lost. Then here's the game board. It's pretty big. It's 22 inches by 22 inches. Kind of a fold-out board here. Different, com different components. Here's the space areas. Here's the Galactica with different areas of Galactica for different actions to take place. This is the Colonial One, which is the, the where the President's office is located. And also on here there's different areas for actions. Put your skills cards down here. Destiny deck, damaged vipers, viper and raptor reserves. These are the resource styles, Cylon locations, Caprica, Cylon fleet, human fleet, resurrection ship, and then the jump preparation track, and the boarding party indicators. Game involves several kinds of cards. We've got the smaller cards and the big cards. These cards are the destination cards. For instance, the Tillium planet. Show some information about it. The COBOL objective card. These are skill cards for different areas like politics, leadership, tactics, piloting and engineering. Different actions stated there. Then the President and Admiral cards where it talks about their actions that they can perform and their abilities. Other cards, these are quorum cards, can be drawn by the president to increase morale, deal with Cylons, or give special abilities. Crisis cards, some re represent Cylon attacks and some have skill checks, for instance a pass or fail here. Super Crisis cards, when a Cylon player reveals himself, he receives one of these cards. Shows some information, like a check here. Loyalty cards. Get one at the start of the game, each player, then another, you know, during the game. And kept secret, and they inform the player whether they're a Cylon or not. That's all the components, then we'll get into play. Getting into setup here. It's got the game board here. Set the Food and fuel dials to 8, set morale to 10, and population to 12. Put 6 of the Vipers up in the Viper and Raptor Reserves, and then put 2 on the board below Galactica as shown here in the space areas. Then you put the 4 Raptors in the Raptor, Viper and Raptor Reserves as well. Put the fleet token in the start space for the jump track. Then you put all other tokens face down in plastic ships adjacent to the game board. Randomly determine which player goes first. I'm going to do four players, so I'll just roll four times. The 
fourth one rolling will go first. Then starting with the first player and going clockwise, you choose a character, the character type that's most plentiful, which is, uh, you know, these are the character types. It doesn't apply to support characters who they may choose at any time. So I'll go through first player. Go with uh, Laura Roslin for player one. Player two will go with Commander Dama. Player three will go with Starbuck, pilot, of course. And player four will go the infamous Gaius Baltar. Then the first player token goes on the first player here. You take the the character tokens, put them in the spots indicated here. So for instance, our Ralston goes into the President's office, Commander Dama goes into the Admiral's quarters, Starbuck goes into the hangar deck, and Gaius Baltar goes to the research lab. And Starbuck also receives a pilot token. And you distribute the title cards. So the present title is given to the first available player in the list. So either goes from Laura Roslin to Guy Baltar to Tom Zarek. And since Laura Roslin was chosen, she'll it'll go to her. She gets the present title. The Admiral title is given to the first player in the list. William Adama, Sal Tai, and Hilo Igathon. And since Sadama was chosen, it'll go to him. The Admiral gets two nuke tokens. The President draws one card from the Quorum deck. And the card she drew is Inspirational Speech, Action Roll Die. If a six or higher, gain one morale and remove this card from the game. Otherwise, no effect and discard this card. Setting up the remaining ships, we've already put two Vipers down here. And now you put a Cylon base star in front of Galactica and three Cylon Raiders. And then you randomly put two civilian ships face down behind Galactica. Set up the loyalty cards, take out the you are the sympathizer card, then separate into the you, you are not a Cylon or you are a Cylon. Then you mix in the deck the appropriate number of you are a Cylon or you are not a Cylon cards based on number of players. For four players, it'd be one you are a Cylon and six you are not a Cylon. For three, it's one and five. Five, it's two and eight. Six is two and nine. Then you add one you are not a silent for each guy's Baltar or Sharon Valeri character playing. I'm using guy's Baltar, so I'll add one in. Shuffle the deck. And distribute one to each player. And they'll be secret for each person, but since I'm just playing by myself, I'll just show it there. The president's not a Cylon. The Admiral, thankfully, is not a Cylon. Starbuck is not a Cylon. Guys, Baltar is a Cylon. Since it's for four or six players, you add the your sympathizer card in there, and I'll add that in. Shuffle the deck and then place the remaining cards next to the game board. Then you sh shuffle the Quorum deck, Crisis deck, Super Crisis deck, and Destination deck and put them next to the board. And you put the Cobalt Objective card next to the Destination deck. Take the skill cards. Organize them according to their, their type, like for instance, politics, leadership, tactics, piloting, engineering, and then you put shuffle them and put them under 
their respective area. Each player, except starting player, draws a total of three skill cards from among any of the cards he can draw during his receive skill step. The starting player does not receive skill cards now, but will draw skill cards at the start of his turn. The commander can have leadership or tactics, so he'll take two leadership and one tactics. Starbuck can have tactics piloting, leadership or engineering. She'll take tactics, piloting, and engine and uh, leadership. Guys Baltar can have politics, leadership, engineering. He'll take one of each. Politics, leadership, engineering. Then to make the destiny deck, you take two of each of the skill types. Shuffle them, then put them on the Destiny deck to make the Destiny deck. Then we'll get into play. So the first player to go is President Laura Roslin, and first she receives her skills. She gets three politics and two leadership for three politics. She has Consolidate Power for each of them, all power of one. Again, she'll keep that secret from other people. Two Leadership, she gets a Declare Emergency with the power of four, Executive Order with the power of one. Then Movement, she wants to go to the Press Room, she wants to build up some more skills. And if she were to go to the, move from her ship, the Colony 1, to the Battlestar Galactica, she would need one skill to do that. But since she's just moving on her own ship, she doesn't have to spend skills to do that. For action, she will activate the action in that section. The types of actions you generally can do are, you can activate the location here. You can do a skill card action. You can activate a Viper if you're piloting a Viper, which he's not. You can do uh, an action from title and quorum cards or do nothing. But she's going to choose to activate. She's going to activate her location. And because of that, she gets two politics skill cards. And the two are an investigative committee for power of three and a consolidate power for power of one. The investigative committee, you play before cards are added to a skill deck. All skill cards are played face up during the skill check, including from the destiny deck. For the consolidate power, the action would be to draw two skill cards of any type. They may come from outside your skill set. So, so she got the other one she got for leadership previously. Uh, declare emergency. You would play after strength is totaled in a skill check to reduce its difficulty by two. Limit of one declare emergency card used per skill check. Executive order. Choose any other player. He may move his character and then take one action or not move and take two actions. Limit of one executive order, card use per turn. So she completed her action that turn, which was activating her room. And now you do the crisis step. Draw a card from the crisis cards. And the crisis card is network computer to the power of 11. Colonel, you know the old man would never do this. No computer networks on his ship. That's what Kelly says. 
and the and she can choose between the two options, which are the first one is has a pass and fail. And the pass is increase jump preparation, track by one, fail, minus one population, and place one centurion marker at the start of the boarding party track. Then the other option she could choose is minus one population, decrease the jump preparation, track by one. She'll choose the first option with a pass fail. And in this, in this crisis, the cards you can use are yellow, purple, and blue, which are politics, tactics, and engineering. Other cards would give negative values. So now all the team members put together cards there. Take two cards from the Destiny deck. And you don't know what values these have. And this is where it gets interesting because the different players would kind of generally discuss, discuss amongst themselves how much they can help or not. And meanwhile, the Cylons will figure out if they want to put negative values on there or kind of be a little more discreet about that. Then starting to the left of the, the player that's going, players choose which cards go after they kind of discuss it. In discussion, the Admiral and Starbuck both admit they can't contribute too much, but Gaius, who turns out that he's a Cylon, and nobody knows that, says he's very confident he can add quite a bit to get everybody's confidence up. But first for the Commander, the Admiral, he only has uh, greens and purples, so he can just contribute his purple, which is uh, only a power of one. Starbuck? Doesn't have any yellow or blue, she's just got a purple, but with a power of two, so she'll add that. Gaius Baltar, he wants to mess them up, and he, he's got yellow and blues he could add in there, but he's just going to mess them up by putting in a green to knock down their score. The president has some yellows that she can add. She'll add a three investigative committee and a one for consolidate power. Now they look at the destiny cards and they need they need an eleven or better to pass. So the points they're at so far is one, three, they get a minus one for the green, so they're back down to two, and then plus three and, and one, so it's one, three, then minus one to two, five, and six. So they need uh 11 or better to win this skill. They look at the Destiny deck. Destiny deck has a, a 1 tactics and a 1 leadership, but you get a plus 1 for this and minus 1 for this, so they're still back down to 6 and they fail the test. And the result of failing the test is minus 1 population. Move the marker to move the dial down to 11 now. You place one centurion marker at the start of the boarding party track. So, yeah, you got a centurion marker right there. The indicator here on the card says that Cylon Raiders are activated, and they're activated one area at a time. So, there's three in this area, and these will be activated. And then their options are they can attack a Viper, destroy a civilian ship move or attack Galactica. After activate they'll attack a Viper if there's one in this area. If there's not, they'll destroy a civilian ship there. If there is not a civilian ship, then they'll move one space towards the nearest civilian ship. And uh, if they're in equal distance as it is here, they'll go clockwise, so they'll go this direction. And then if there's no civilian ships, then I'll attack Galactica. So the Cylon Raiders will move over here. And then you also have to decrease the jump preparation track by one, but they're already at the start position, so they can't decrease any further. Then you discard all the ones, all the skill cards that were played back. Face up. 
by their pilots. Since they failed the crisis, they moved back one jump, and then during the jump activation, they would have moved forward one. My interpretation that was that they canceled out. That's the end of the president's turn. At the end, and at the end of every player's turn, everybody checks. All the players check their cards to make sure they don't have more than ten skill cards. And if so, they discard to get down to ten. And nobody's got you know more than ten cards right now. And we'll go on to the next. Who is uh, Commander Adama? Gets his skill cards, which is three leadership and two tactics. For leadership, he's got executive orders of values one, two, and three. For tactics, strategic planning for a value of three which is play B for any die roll to add two to the result. Limited of one strategic planning card used per die roll. And then a value of one for launch scout. Action, risk one raptor to roll a die. Give three or higher. Look at the top card of the crisis or destination deck and place it on top or bottom. Otherwise, destroy one raptor. For movement, he's going to move to the command area. So he has the option of activating up to two unmanned raptors. But the action he's going to take is he's got two nukes. And he can launch one nuke at a base star. So he's going to do that. He's going to launch one of his nukes at the base star. On a roll of one to two, you damage the base star twice. Three to six, destroy the base star. Seven to eight. Destroy the base star and three raiders. So he's considering either doing that or launching vipers, but he might be able to take the base star out with the nukes. He's going to do that. Roll. Five. He destroyed the base star. Nice. And you take the nuke out of the game, but the base star is gone too. That's pretty successful. And then the crisis is rescue Caprica survivors. The Cylons have a plan for Caprica, but they haven't killed everyone. I think our first order of business has to be playing to rescue, has to be playing a rescue mission back to Caprica, Carothrace. So the president chooses. Minus one fuel, minus one food, plus one population, or minus one morale. She actually choose the minus one morale because it's easier for her to increase morale than to increase the other resources. So they'll lose one morale. And there's no skill check on that one, but raiders are activated and then also a jump movement. So for this one we'll activate the Raiders. Let's say Cylons are act Raiders are activated one entire area at a time and since there's three in this area I'm assuming all these are activated and they can attack a Viper in its area and there's a Viper there so they'll do that and they, they each need a 5 to 7 to damage it or 8 to destroy it. Two, miss. Three, miss. Damaged. The Viper is put into the damaged Viper area. And the jump preparation advances. Then again, let me check to see if anybody's got ten cards or more. Nobody does. So we move on to the next player, which is Starbuck. Starbuck gets her skill cards. She's got two tactics, which is a launch scout and strategic planning. Strategic planning is play before any die roll to add to the result. Limit of one strategic planning card used per die roll. And then she gets two piloting. Evasive maneuvers. I 
If I have to any viper is attacked, to re-roll the die, viper is piloted, subtract 2 from the new roll. And maximum firepower. Action, play while piloting viper to attack up to 4 times. That'll be handy. And she gets one of either leadership or engineering, and she can choose. Whenever it indicates a couple things there, you can choose whatever combination from those groups. She go with engineering. Repair. Action, repair your current location. Or if you're in the hangar deck location, you may repair up to you two damage vipers. It's handy. And then for movement, she's at the... She's at the hangar deck, so she doesn't need to move, and she'll launch herself in a viper. And can take one more action. She'll launch the viper, put her token on there. For her other action, she can't engage a silent yet because she's not in the same space, so she'll not take an action. Let me do the crisis. Silent virus. It's the virus, sir. I think I, I think it spawned copies of itself in some of the computer systems. It's knocked out main power in auxiliary units. It says Felix. If you pass, there's no effect. Fail. All characters in the FTL control location are sent to sick bay. Then place one centurion marker at the start of the, port the boarding party track. And also, this will activate a lot of items. So, 13, it's a pretty high amount you're going for there. And it's, it's purple and blue. That's the tough one, especially since it's purples and blues, and there's not a lot of purples and blues that they have. But, Starbuck has the Secret Destiny ability where once per game, immediately after Crisis Card is revealed, discard it and draw a new one. So she's going to do that. She's going to get a different Crisis Card. This one is Rescue Mission. Roger that, Boomer. Search and Rescue Ops are underway for Starbuck. Bring Hot Dog in. The old man wants to talk to him from Anastasia. Admiral chooses either minus one morale, and the current player is sent to sick bay, or minus one fuel and destroy one raptor. Well, he doesn't want to. Uh, he don't doesn't want to send Starbuck to sick bay, so he'll take minus one fuel and destroy one raptor. So he loses one fuel, and one raptor is destroyed and removed from the game. And the card indicates that a base star is activated, if there's any present, but fortunately there's no base stars because the nuke took it out, so none are activated. And then they advance to jump. These raiders weren't activated, so they're not doing anything. And then we see if anybody's got more than 10 skill set cards, and nobody does. So you then moved on to, to Gaius Balter. And he started the game, since he's a coward, he started the game with two loyalty cards. One was not, and one was. But once you get you are a Cylon, then you are a Cylon. So he's a Cylon. For his skills, he gets, but I mean, nobody knows he's a Cylon yet. He's going to get two politics cards. They both consolidate power. Action, draw two skill cards of any type. They may come from outside your skill set. A pol uh, leadership. Level three. Play after strength is totaled in a skill attack to reduce its difficulty by two. Limit of one, declare emergency card used per skill check. And then engineering. Or four. Play before cards are added to a skill check. All engineering cards in the skill check count as positive strength. It's nice. 
his movement. So he doesn't want to make it obvious to everybody he's a Cylon yet, so he'll just, instead of moving, he'll just stay in his research lab. In his... Some actions on his card are he can... He's got delusional intu intuition. Or after you draw a crisis card, draw one skill card of your choice. Or his silent detector action. Once per game, you may look at all loyalty cards belonging to another player. So he's going to pretend like he's trying to unmask where there's Cylons. And he'll choose to look at the loyalty cards of the president. And you'll see that President Rosalind is not a Cylon. So is his action. Let me do a crisis card. Crisis card is guilt by collusion with a value of nine. He has greens and purples. Guess you haven't heard, Cylons don't have rights. No we do to Cylons, Chief? From Sol Teague. Pass. Current player may choose a character to move to the brig. Fail. Minus one morale. And it activates Cylons and causes a jump. So you put two Destiny cards here on the Destiny deck. And then the President goes. And she thinks it's too early to put anybody in the brig yet, so she's not going to put a green or blue, a green or purple. She'll put a yellow to take a minus one off that. The commander. He's happy to put someone in the brig to figure stuff out. So he puts a, a four green on there. Starbuck also is okay with putting somebody in the brig. She put a three in there. And then Gaius Baltar definitely wants to put someone in the brig too. He put a three green there. So the total so far is minus one, so three, six, nine and they need nine or better. Destiny cards are a plus one and a minus one, so it, the total comes up to nine. So, past the current player may choose a character to move the brig. And he doesn't, uh, he would kind of like to put the president in the brig because he knows that she's not a Cylon, but that'd be too obvious. To, I think the president would figure out that he was a Cylon then. So he's gonna he's gonna put the commander in the brig, which I'm sure he doesn't appreciate. Again, he'll give the rationale that he thinks the commander is a Cylon. And from the card, raiders are activated, so there's no viper here to go. They'll move towards the closest civilians. And then also a jump step is performed. Then we see if anybody's got more than 10 skill cards and they don't. So that's the end of that turn. You may do skill checks. An important point is that after you get all the cards, you shuffle them together so that you know nobody knows who put down what card. That keeps everything secret. Like who's a Cylon, who's not. And just progressing the game into following turns to show other things that can be performed. So for instance, in the next turn if Starbuck was to take an action with attacking Vipers, she could play the maximum firepower, which would allow her to attack up to four four times. There's three raiders there, so she's attacking a raider, she needs a 3 to 8. Hit. 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 Should have taken out. Should have one more, two. Should have taken out all those raiders. And then as they progress in turns on the jump track, as they progress in turns, the jump will move along. And then once they get to auto jump, the commander will look at 
take two cards from a destination card deck, look at them, and then choose which one they want to do. So for instance, here you have a Tillium planet, you lose one fuel, you risk one raptor, troll dive three or higher, gain two fuel, otherwise you destroy one raptor. Or you can go to barren planet, lose two fuel. And the distance for the Tillium is one and barren is two. And uh, for instance, if we, if we were to choose the barren planet, then you would get credit for moving two. And then once you get a total of eight, and then one more jump after that, you win the game. That's how they would progress in there towards their destination. And for the Cylons, once they knock one of these resources down to zero or they destroy the Galactica, they win. Or by successfully invading Galactica with Centurion boarding parties. So that's a bit how to play. That's Battlestar Galactica, the board game from Fantasy Flight Games from 2008. Excellent, excellent game. You have entry, you have mystery, you have resources you have to monitor, a little bit of combat, strategy and tactics. Um, it's a, uh, you know, work together as a team, but you don't know who within your team is against a team and, you know, who, who are the silence, who are the humans. So you have to kind of hide that. And I, I did it as a single play, but obviously if you get a lot of people playing, there can be a lot of going back and forth of accusing people of being Cylons, and that can be a lot of fun, I'm sure. A lot of options for, you know, building up your cards, or when you deploy your cards, etc. Components are great. I like that everything's right on the board. Um, one minor thing, it would have been nice if they had the, the combat table on the board, that would have been handy. That's just a one minor little thing I would add. But it, it's always great when a game has a theme established from either, you know, books or in this case a, a TV show and, you know, I guess movies too. Because you can kind of get in the, the show and then you kind of play it out here. In that way it reminds me of uh, like the Firefly game too because that's again a sci-fi show I like quite a bit that also you can play it out on the board. Happy to have a copy of it. It's hard to come across and I see why people don't sell it out there because they like to keep it themselves. There's also expansions for it as well I understand. Highly recommended. I don't give many 10s but I'll definitely give this one a 10 out of 10. Thanks a lot.